Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to uh, Knuckleheads of Liberty Podcast is our uh, new logo, uh, but we were formerly Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Um, and uh, we are actually doing a part two of a show that we are continuing from our last show on what is peaceful protesting. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, let me reestablish the date today is January 27th, 2021. And, uh, you know, it's it's been a year of crazy protesting, as we talked about in the last. We've, we've gone through just about a year of it. But let's uh, let's introduce the panel. So up in our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. Yeah. Uh, he is a pilot in the state of California. Uh, and in our upper right-hand corner, uh, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Uh, so let's jump right back into it. We were discussing... Uh, what is a peaceful protest? And a lot of this is because, as we talked about in the last show, uh, you know, a lot of people are confused. CNN has been involved in confusing a lot of people on <laughs> what peaceful or mostly peaceful protest is. And we'll get to some of that as we go on. And and Chris Cuomo even said, "Hey, peace protests don't even have to be peaceful." So, yeah. anyways, uh, let's let's get back. We left off on. Um, the issue with, you know, when yeah. crowds are sort of getting aggressive and screaming in people's faces. And we yeah. had just talked about a, a image in uh, Portland where a bunch of protesters were uh, screaming in some senior citizens faces who were trying to uh, put out a fire that they were starting <laughs> on a police station. And we had just uh, gone from that to uh, Rand Paul leaving the uh, RNC convention where protesters yeah. gathered around mm -hmm. him uh, as he was simply trying to get across the street uh, to, from the uh, um, uh, from the White House to his hotel. He had to be diverted uh, a mile away by bus and come back on a cab and the cab wouldn't even get within three blocks of the hotel. So he had to walk the rest of the way. The crowd saw him, started chanting at him, screaming, uh, obscenities and everything else. Finally, a couple of police officers got around him to protect him and his wife. Um, and uh, they're they, in some cases they were pushing the policeman back. You know, uh, there's at least one where he uh, literally started to fall over almost, you know, where he got uh, pushed by one of the protesters. So again, um, you know, this is a, you know, crowd that didn't actually, as far as I know, light anything on fire in this case. However, they were literally blocking his, for, uh, his his ability to pass just to get to the place he had to go to sleep. So Rand Paul's freedom to peacefully pass was being blocked by the protesters exercising, in their minds, their right to peacefully protest in this case. So again, uh, you know, you guys have any thoughts on this particular instance? Uh, Leon, you want to go? Well, well, if if. Jason, if in this case, say Rand Paul was walking up the street, going to his hotel, nobody was blocking his path. I mean, maybe somebody might have been standing on the on the on the on the pavement. He say, "Excuse me," they step aside. He walk up the road, even though they may be protesting something or the other. That would have been just fine. But what we are looking at here, and and as, as the story was told, there were aggressive acts against Rand Paul, against his wife, who was with him at, that night, and against the police officers who were trying to protect him. So this was clearly not a peaceful protest. They were protesting something that Rand Paul is heavily involved with, which would probably would have agreed, they would have agreed with. It is the, um, the Breonna Taylor um, legislation to stop no-knock no warrants. But he, if you go back now to the previous show where we had those protesters on the freeway, True, they were blocking the path of mobility, but they were doing it peacefully. They were doing it peacefully. Not this image, the first image I was referring to. This one. This, to me, is a peaceful protest. Now, I don't like BLM. I think they're a bunch of crap, <coughs> but this is a peaceful protest. But the case of Rand Paul and his wife, where they were taking aggressive acts against them as citizens of the United States, that was not peaceful. And yes, I know CNN and MSNBC are going to tell us it was a mostly peaceful protest. It was not. 
And this is the hypocrisy of these people. They want to tell us what sort of lawlessness we should accept and what we should reject. And this is nonsense. Screaming uh, Eagle, do you have thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I get a little hung up on that whole uh, say her name. They, they were they were screaming at uh, Rand, Paul, and his wife, uh, say her name, well, mainly yes. at Rand, uh, talking about Brianna Taylor. Um, and apparently they had forgotten all about his uh, no-knock warrant legislation, the only valid legislation that had a chance of potentially stopping issues like what happened to Breonna Taylor in the future. All right. Yeah. And so, so the, the, the guy that introduces the legislation, I think he may have introduced it with, with one other Senator, the guy that introduces the legislation is being heckled. And um, part of the, the whole um, thing about, you know, violence and which is the opposite of peacefulness. Okay. So is that these, uh, his, him and his wife were exposed. They were out on, um, in a public area exposed to whatever, um, assaults anyone wanted to do. So there's, there's an element of fear just in that when you're faced with a, uh, an angry mob or crowd or of people. And, uh, so there's th that whole lack of, um, of uh, civility that Leon gave a great contrast to. I mean, had they, had they, you know, even if they would have just lined up and let him go where he wanted to go, but just said, you know, say her name, you know, or, yeah. you know, think about Brianna and let him go his way that that could have been considered to be peaceful at the, at that point, you know, and, well, but, but I guess l let me push back just a little bit though, Tim, because in the case mm -hmm. of the, uh, people on the freeway, they are not letting anybody pass. That is, it's not like they're telling people, uh, yeah, yeah, you heard us. Now we're going to let each car pass one by one. They are literally not letting you pass. So if, mm -hmm. if you have a health condition, if you are going to miss an important meeting that may get you fired at your job, if you are going to miss an important event in your life, it's too bad mm -hmm. because they are going to exercise their right to peacefully protest to keep you from peacefully engaging in any of these things you may value so yeah, that, that that's, yeah that's the point that i i can see I, I in the last session i i agreed with that point i agreed you know it's just uh again to get back to to this one though where it was clearly mm -hmm. not that i mean they they were not only trying to block him but they were mm -hmm. uh focused on him i mean not not just uh sitting uh still and and, and uh you know, in, in trying to block a thoroughfare, they were, they were crowding around him, following him as he moved, uh, his position, they moved with him. I mean, all that is, is clearly, uh, an act of aggression and, uh, the opposite of what we want to see in peaceful protesting. So yeah, th this is, this is an, an example, CNN, we know you're listening. This is an example <laughs> of not peaceful protesting. <laughs> okay. Well, but yes, sir, but okay. yes, before we move on from this image, you know, okay, or oh, before we move on, period. So, are you saying then, okay, if we have what we will categorize, what we, the three of us, would categorize as a peaceful protest, something on public property, people walking down the street, maybe ten thousand people walking down the street protesting some issue, whether it's police brutality, whether it's whatever. But they're doing it peacefully. They're walking down the street. An ambulance is trying to cross over to the other side because of a, a medical emergency. Somebody's about to die. Are you saying that that is not a peaceful protest if the ambulance can't cross? Even if, even if that person may die, which is it would be tragic. I would agree with that. I, I, I'm saying if, if they are peaceful protesters, they will clear a way for the ambulance to pass. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I, you I'll know, that's bottom line. If, if they're not, if they're, if, yeah. if they literally think that whatever they're doing is more important than somebody else dying, they're not peaceful anymore. Right. I mean, that's, okay, that's, 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 that's what I would say. I'll have uh, to and, concede that point. I, I'll, I'll have to concede that point. And more unlikely, more unlikely if they indeed have been peaceful, they would clear the way for the ambulance. Okay. I'll have to concede that point. Okay. So on that point, I will, I will, I will concede. I will concede the rest of my, I will not concede the rest of my argument, but I concede that point.
Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a good discussion because, I mean, this really gets into some of the points. But let's go on to the next because the next one is is in the same realm of discussion about letting people pass, but amps it up just a little bit. So in this case, we're talking about Garrett Foster, who was actually a libertarian. Uh, I think he was a registered libertarian, and he had been in the military. And he is the individual you can see circled back here. He's behind this woman, and he is holding a loaded AK-47. And this car uh, is trying hello, to... Jason, uh, we're not seeing it. We're, we oh. have the image of Rand Paul still. Oh, no, I'm, okay. seeing I'm seeing, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the image of that. Just... I'm seeing the image, Tim. So what, the, the, what, what are you seeing, seeing? Leon? What I am seeing the image of, of the, that Jason is speaking about right now. Yeah. Um, so let me, okay, let me, well, let me, well, let's just you're pretend not, you're seeing seeing right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll pretend I'm listening on the podcast okay. without anything. Yeah. Okay. But, but you, right. you've okay. seen the AK image 47. too as well. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyways, uh, in the case of Garrett Foster, this happened back in July of 2020 during a Black Lives Matter protest. I believe it was in uh, one of the Texas cities. I'm not sure if it was Houston or Dallas. But um, but anyways, uh, uh, and uh, so Garrett Foster was a libertarian who was on the side of BLM and they were blocking a street unpermitted. Uh, they were blocking a street and somebody accidentally turned down the wrong street. He was uh, I think he was an Uber driver who was also uh had a, was employed by the military as well, but he had been doing an Uber job that night and he wound up getting stuck in this crowd and he was trying to pass. He couldn't pass very quickly. He was, you know, I guess he was slowly trying to work his way through. And then he was approached by some people, I guess, were yelling at his car. Some people were kicking his car. And then comes a guy who's carrying an AK-47 up toward the car and uh, and so the driver had a gun in his car and he shot him and killed him. And yeah. the question is, is that peaceful protesting? If you literally, I mean, you're, you're blocking a street, you're blocking someone else's right who's trying to peacefully protest. And then you approach that car with a loaded gun showing. Is that still peaceful protesting? No, no, it's not. No, no, no. I, I, it can be. It can be. OK. And um, if if this, this guy approach, I think I believe this happened in Austin, in Austin, Texas. Jason, Austin. Okay. Yeah. Now, the guy walks up to the car with an AK forty seven. Obviously, anyone will think about that as a threat. So the minute you see anything like that, this can't be a peaceful protest anymore. All right. You have to protect yourself. And in this case, the guy had a gun, a gun, a loaded gun. He used it. But you have to protect yourself. How would you? How would you know it's not a threat? I have a quick question for Tim. Is Austin? Is it allowed to open carry a weapon like that? I mean, because if mm. not, why did the police not mm. stop him? Because mm -hmm. I, I, just a quick question: If it's if open carry is legal, then what was the problem? It seems to me the problem is that they were already violating this guy's rights by not letting him pass. And then when you walk up to him showing a gun while you're violating his right to peacefully pass. I, I can't see how you could think anything else other than that you were going to be violated more than just not letting you peacefully pass. Yeah. Uh, that's um, Yeah. I mean, uh, number one, I don't know the answer to that question for sure. Uh, nor do I know uh, what the answer to the question would be as far as um, uh, did, did he for sure have a right to uh, defend himself by, uh, with lethal force. And I think the answer to that one, though, I mean, I'm pretty sure it would be yes, he does have that right. Um, there was also a, another part of the story, you may go into it, where a second uh, person after uh, the guy, the Uber driver drove away, uh, fired some rounds in, in toward his car. Yes. Now that no matter where you are in the United States would not be a reason to utilize lethal force. So that guy should have been arrested for absolute certain and convicted of using illegal use of lethal force, even though no one was shot by that, which is lucky considering all the, the crowds and so on, but, uh, and it's in a city but um, yeah, discharge your firearm within city limits, uh, illegal um, uh, use of a firearm, uh, all that should have been 
buried upon that it should have been piled upon that guy the the second guy that's not even you know part of the first altercation other than as you know being one of the guys running around at a protest carrying loaded firearms so um and i'm assuming the the uber guy may have just um, they, both of those guys by the way had permits to carry uh concealed weapons the, did, the yes. uber driver and the guy shooting at the um at the fl the only time you can use lethal force is when you are in fear of serious bodily injury or death, which when somebody's approaching you and you can't go anywhere in your car, you're trapped, surrounded by a bunch of raving lunatics that have already struck your car. And some guy with an AK-47, I don't care if his hands off of it, starts coming up toward you, you've got the right to shoot and kill that guy if you if you've are feeling threatened. Well, which, who wouldn't? I mean, <laughs> got to be brain dead not to feel threatened in, in a situation like that. So um, that's what I'm thinking. Other than that, I'm not sure. I don't know that open carry is um, is really would get into it. Uh, it would even be a factor. For example, okay, let's assume there was open carry was allowed. Okay, so you're you're walking around with your AK and it's loaded, and you're walking up to a trapped car, and you're going to advance toward that driver as if you want him. You know, are you going to save him? Are you going to clear the way for him to to proceed uh, peacefully? Nah, you don't know. I mean. <laughs> So it doesn't matter if it's legal for him to carry openly or not. You are very likely to be considered to be a threat to the driver. So whether you're carrying that gun legally or not makes no difference. And he's got the right to kill you, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, not an attorney. <laughs> that's your that's your disclaimer okay that's your disclaimer. my disclaimer yes exactly as, as, yeah. as i remember the story all the three parties who had guns were all legal guns all three of them okay the guy with the ak-47 the uber driver yeah. and the person who shot who shot at the um shot at the car when the uber driver was driving away if i remember the story correctly well and, but, and there's one other oh sorry go ahead no finish Ahead, well, I was just going to say this one other point too before going on to the next one. The uh, uh, the police did let the Uber driver go afterwards, um, so they, I guess, had a good reason to believe that this was self defense as You're well, right. um, yes. uh, because they. I mean, he. I, I'm not sure if he got charged later, but but initially, uh, after he called it in and said, "Hey, look, I had to shoot somebody because yeah. you know some guy came at my car while they were blocking me, you know, with an with an AK-47." So. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know what happened to the guy that shot a a after the fleeting Uber driver? Uh, I don't think they ever caught him. I, I think yeah, he went. He was arrested too. Oh, oh he was from, okay. from the article. He was arrested. Yes, but I don't know if they charged him. They sure should have, but I don't know if they did. Maybe maybe this is something we should check on because we we, we did yeah. touch on this subject slightly previously, and we never uh, not not in this depth, but we did we did a. Uh, Touching it, and we never, we never did have a follow up on it. So maybe that's something we should probably check on and find out something or, about. Or perhaps well, let's a member of you. our audience should for us, which would really <laughs> yeah. be cool. There we go. There let, we go. <laughs> let me let me progress to the next oh, yeah. one because we definitely want to get through all these. Uh, so oh, now yeah. this one should be a little easier. <laughs> this is in Sacramento, so I wanted to include this because it oh, yeah. was near and dear to us in California. Uh, but yes. uh, Trump came to McClellan, I think it was McClellan Air Force Base, uh, during the fire season here in Sacramento, where fires have literally been getting like apocalyptic here uh, during the summers due to a lot of it's due to forest management, I guess. But but the uh, it, it, to not get off on a tangent, the group of protesters were out there because they knew Trump was there. So they weren't protesting our you know, forest management policies, or whatever. <laughs> but, but they were pro protesting that Trump showed up. And so anyways, in, and I, and so the uh, CBS news, I guess, was out there and they caught on tape a, uh, there was only one, it looks like highway patrol car here trying to manage this whole crowd. But at one point uh, they started attacking the car and a guy literally was climbing on top of the car and, and CBS reported this in the broadcast as a peaceful protest, <laughs> not even mostly peaceful as a peaceful protest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're attacking a car with somebody in it, that's not peaceful. I, I don't know. So CBS news speak. I don't know. Well, you guys have any quick thoughts on this one? <laughs> well, whether, whether there's somebody in a car or not is really irrelevant. You are attacking property that is, does not belong to you uh, personally. 
you're attacking property. So I don't know, it, it, people in it, people not in it, it doesn't really matter. It's not peaceful. But this is the problem we're having, that these people want to tell us, the, the, the so-called peaceful protesters and the media want to tell us what lawlessness we should accept and what we should not, okay? When the BLM and the Antifa was burning down our cities, that was unacceptable. But when, that was acceptable, I'm sorry, that was acceptable. But when the fringe elements of, of, of the Trump campaign stormed the Capitol and riot in the Capitol, no, 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 that was an insurrection. We should object to that one. This is the nauseating thing that we should, that we should object to, that these people should at least have one standard instead of the double standard and hypocrisy that we have to live with. Gaslight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, in the uh, in the little uh, link that you sent us regarding this uh, with the video of this, uh, I, I love the interview with the one lady that was saying and and then with absolutely out of the clear blue, he just gunned it. I mean, it's like just, <laughs> I'm a, it's like somebody climbing on the car. I forgot about that part. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, and so, yeah, he, he gunned it. What happened to the guy in the car? Well, yeah. he flipped off, landed on his head. Okay, play <laughs> stupid games. You get to win stupid yeah. prizes yeah. because yeah. this guy won the prize. Well, and, and of course, no skepticism from the reporter at all. You know? yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah, now, just interviewing. Now, if we go back to our previous, our previous, uh, our previous argument about the the BLM people sitting in the street. Now, if one of them had gotten run over, of course, it's a tragic event. But I would have no sympathy for them. It was plain stupid. Yeah. But it was still peaceful. Okay. Yeah. But it was yeah. plain stupid. Uh, yeah, I see your point, Leon. You're you're just describing the protest, uh, you know, for what it appears to be, because they're just lay, sitting on, on the pre right. there or standing, and yes. just you know, just kind of not not like I don't know, they're not like advancing with a bunch of clubs and baseball bats to beat your car, correct? Right. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. So they're they're standing there, and yeah, I get it. If I mean that looks awfully peaceful to me uh again it's it stops the movement of people and i find that controversial but anyway um here we <laughs> okay, are to, to getting talk on to about our controversy yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so this is the McCloskeys, uh, who were made famous and infamous at the same time by yeah. the uh, uh, yeah, by by a, a BLM crowd in uh, in uh, Minneapolis. Or no, no, no. It's uh, Missouri. Yes. Yes. St. Louis. Yeah, Louis. St. Louis. And they were they were uh, this was private property. So what happened was uh, uh, they, they were on their way somewhere else, but they decided to uh, break through a gated community. Uh, essentially. And um, just uh, so there's no confusion, this was the gate that was broken through. <laughs> yeah. Jason, uh, Jason's showing an image of the broken gate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it was peacefully broken through. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this was the crowd. And so when uh, obviously when they see this huge mob of people who were not supposed to be on the private property of their community, uh, uh, they, I guess, decided they'd better defend their private property. So they, they carried guns out onto their private property. Now, that's be a little different than Garrett Foster, who was on public property where they were blocking somebody else's right to protest, or, I mean, I was blocking somebody else's right to pass, rather, uh, yeah. to peacefully pass. These people were literally sitting in their homes, and they were alarmed by a mob that was protesting. They shouldn't have been there, and so they brought out to make sure that the protest didn't go into their house. Um, and then they were roundly vilified throughout the nation and I guess charged with a lot of crimes. And no protesters were were <laughs> uh, charged with anything for the uh, trespass, but they were charged for threatening with weapons. So that's kind of the gaslighting we're into right now. But clearly, um, you know, trespass. If you're trespassing, well, it does, seems like you well, can't be peacefully protesting. Yeah, I've... Uh... I just read something recently and I haven't verified it, but I read that the, uh, I think it was the judge in this, in their case, or it was the attorney general of the state in their case, uh, wanted to drop the all charges against them. And, and uh, uh, then again, I haven't verified what the reasons were, but apparently there was a previous video that was no longer seen and they have copies of video that they took the, the couple, 
from inside the house of uh, people coming up to the windows and yelling at them and, and them calling 911 and they have the tape of the 911 operator saying, we're not coming out, you're on your own. Maybe it had to do with the fact there's mm. private property or maybe the political environment or maybe they were told not, you know, not to go out. I don't know. I don't know any, I can't verify any of these things, but if, um, if a lot of this is uh, true, then um, you can understand now, you know, tactically, you don't come out on the same level as the other people. They had an upper balcony where they could have gone out on the balcony and uh, confronted them, which would, would have uh, been a lot better for everybody involved. Um, but if if they're uh, in fear of, of their life, um, you know, certainly they can uh, do something to protect their lives. I don't recommend this personally as a gun owner myself. I would not recommend that. Uh, because this is not a tactical, this is not a good, this is not good tactics from, from a tactical uh, standpoint where you want to go out on the, the same level and, and uh, basically uh, expose yourself. I mean, you know, this is, this is not um, military tactics 1A recommended. So, uh, you know, but uh, anyway, as, as from what my understanding is, uh, the case against them is is going to be difficult to uh, to prosecute. What do you think, Liam? If these people are ever prosecuted or uh, imprisoned or in any way for defending their property, our country is lost. Okay, because ah. this was on private property. These people broke down a gate, came into these people's property, and a man took out a gun to defend his property. And you're going to prosecute him for that? Our country is lost if these people are prosecuted. Totally lost. Right. Whoa, that's that's big. But I I I think I can I can agree with you. And I, I you know I can argue tactics, but uh, you know, and I I can you know sit back 2020 uh, vision and say, well, they shouldn't have done this or they shouldn't have done that or whatever. But yeah, I mean, the bottom line comes uh, down to you know, what, what rights do we have anymore? And, and these, I'm sorry, you know, when you get a whole group of people, a mob, uh, right there, just the fact that you have a, an advantage in sheer numbers, yes. I don't care what you have as your, uh, wonderful, um, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, you know, the thing you're, you're protesting about your, yeah. The thing whatever is, issue, whatever, whatever issue is, whatever issue you have, gone. Okay, if you <laughs> get shot, be, oh, speaking of gone, <laughs> yeah, we're, gone. Oh, we're about right. at the end of the time here, <laughs> and you know it's it's sort of when yeah, rights collide, and unfortunately, your right to keep talking, Tim, is yes. colliding. <laughs> Our right to be on the air. Right? All right. <laughs> so, anyways, but uh, I, I, you know, unfortunately, we still didn't get to the end of it. But we, um, so I guess there will be a part three <laughs> at some point. Uh, but it's fascinating discussion, and it's too yeah. bad that we're not really having a deeper discussion all last year. Uh, you know, on with the media. But the way it is, it's pretty much echo chambers. And <laughs>